Are you thinking about hiring a personal trainer? Today we're talking about how to find a good personal trainer and how there is strength in movement. Bethany shares her story on how she became a personal trainer and decided to take her business online. She also shares tips on how to find a good trainer for yourself. So please stick around and enjoy the show. And welcome to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host, Tanya Child, and I'm excited because we're going to be talking to Miss Bethany Mills, and she likes to be called Beth. So we're going to talk about being empowered by movement and strength. So without further ado, I'd like to bring out Miss Bethany Mills. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on today. I really appreciate it. Oh, I love connecting with people, and you had such a, an enthusiastic, such energy, and we were. we're and your shirt was that I met when I first, I always remember the first time I met people. So I'm thinking about the shirt that you wore. It was just what we needed at that time. So, you know, I'm not going to go to details, but yay. Um, so, Ms. Bethany, tell a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I'm a virtual personal trainer. I used to work in the one-on-one in-person world when COVID hit. Uh, I have a term that I like to follow called adapt or die. So I took my business virtual. I'm different than most trainers where I'm not focused on getting you to lift the heaviest thing in the room or to drop a bunch of weight. What I'm focused on is getting your body to move well so that you can live your life empowered by movement and be pain free. Wow. Wow. Okay. So um, how did you actually, I mean, there's a lot of questions I'm going with this. So first (laughs) How has it been with doing the business on virtual? I mean, are you getting more into the groove of things or has that been a struggle? Yeah. So I was super skeptical at first. It was just what everyone else was doing. So I jumped into it because adapt or die. Uh, And I was always someone who loved to use all the tools in the gym. And I loved having the latest equipment. So I was like, what the heck am I going to do with a couple mini bands and a backpack full of books? Uh, But it's been insane watching the results that my clients have been getting just with the limited equipment that they have at home. Because the biggest lesson it's taught me is all you need is your body and creativity. I love that. I love that. So, so, you know, when you, when we're talking about, we're going to dive a little bit more into the empowerment of, uh, of um, your strength and, and your movements and stuff like that. So tell me, do you use like, um, people use their like everyday things around their house to build their strength and and how did you really dive into what you're doing right now yeah absolutely so the big answer that I always give is it depends I have some people who are a little bit higher equipped with tools at home so they have weights they have a bunch of different bands they have different places they can attach things but I also have a client at home where all they have is a bag filled with books And we use that to hit their back, use do chest exercises, uh, lower body exercises, ab exercises. So you can really utilize any tools that you have around you to make your dreams come true. Right, right, right. And I I always like to give a little background for people who are like tuning in. And and we connected over um, this site called Potted. Mm -hmm. And usually what I like to always ask is like, what's the overarching method that you are, are what did I say? Overarching me- message that you want to share with the audience. So what message did you want to really share? And what, what is it that you're hoping to really ex- bring out with this experience? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the message that I'm trying to share right now is teaching people how to eliminate pain, strengthen their body, uh, and live the life that they've always imagined through science-based strength training. Right, right. So how did you get in? That's what I say. How did you get into this? And, and how did this become your core message? Yeah, sorry. The lighting is super weird. We have to <laughs> see the leaves across me. Hold on just a second. I apologize. I love technology. and We have to learn to improvise on some things. So we come up with creative ways to, to, to build our business. And that's what I love about Miss Beth, because she has creative ways to, to really bring her message. So we will bring back because now she's back. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, 
So funnily enough, my fitness journey started in a bookstore. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) I was in the self-help section of Barnes and Noble and this personal trainer walks up to me and starts hitting on me. And the ironic thing was at the time I was not the athletic type. Uh, You can quote me on this where I'd say I was the last person that you'd find in a gym. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) I ended up working with him because I had an overwhelming urge to serve the community. And I thought that I wanted to place that in going into the police force. Uh, But once I started my fitness journey with Andrew, it, it opened me up to this new world. I love talking about it because before I was like super closed off. I was very closed minded. I was not very adventurous, but exercise taught me how to connect with my body to learn what's going on. It taught me how to create structured and specific goals so that I could find a path to achieve those. And it also taught me how to push myself where before I was that person who, when things got hard, I would give up. That's why I say adapt or die. Uh, I would be that person dead on the ground. But exercise taught me that even if that one rep seems really freaking hard, as long as I go for it, like I will be better for it. Right, right. And I like said, I love your message because like said, we didn't even talk about the adapt or die. But you're you're really what you're trying to talk about is. The, the strength training and the ver- in your training is really not just the physical aspect, but it, it's helping you transform the mind, right? Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Ultimately. So when, when, when we start into this physical, it's like, how do you find the target people who are looking for that? Is it really the, the, the physical aspect or is that just the, the outside that starts the beginning of the transformation? How has the journey helped with you? Uh, sorry. I just don't quite understand that question. It's like when you got it, you started with the physical aspect, but actually it really went down to the deeper level of your mindset. So really, uh, how do you find your, your audience or how did they find you? Or, you know, how do you know people are ready? Or, you know, do you just start with the physical or you, are you for the whole transformation? I guess that's what I'm trying to say. That makes sense. So I go one step at a time because people are cautious around things that are new to them. And starting an exercise routine with somebody that you barely know is scary as heck. Uh, So I start with just the physical things. Most of the people that I work with are people who are recovering from some sort of pain or injury. A lot of them have shoulder pain, they have low back pain, they have knee pain. And I like to work with those people because they're the ones who are most ready to dive in and do the hard work. Okay, that's yeah, that's really easy to like to, uh, grasp a little bit because it's like I know a lot of people don't come in there to be transformed, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> that's what I say. But like, you specialize, you like to hurting. I want to see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I say. So when when you're when, what's the what's the one thing you're like when people are thinking, you know, I got to find um a, a a physical coach to help me. What's the couple of things that they need to be looking for? How do, how do they pick a good coach for them? So number one, I would say is personality. You want to make sure that you're with somebody that you can trust because you're going to be doing things that you're uncomfortable with. You're going to be doing things that you're afraid of. And so you want to be paired with somebody who will be able to empower you, somebody you feel comfortable with and somebody you can trust to lead you on the process. Uh, Number two, I would say look at their credentials. And I'm a little hesitant to say that, Um, but more have a conversation about what their areas of study are. So I have a certification from NASM, which is one of the highest regarded certifications in the fitness industry. So you want to make sure that they have like something from NASM, they have a CSCS, and that they're actually working on continued education. A lot of trainers, it's a really low barrier to entry, which is a blessing for me because I was someone without a college degree And I just happened to fall in love with this industry. Uh, But there's a lot of people who are just going into it and they're like, oh, I know how to work out. I can definitely train people. (laughs) So you want to be wise about that. And number three is ask for results from their previous clients. Those are really good tips and things like that. So, I mean, 
for those who are now tuning in and, and picking up some of the um, messages that Beth is putting down and you're, you're loving her golden nuggets, please consider hitting that like button down there and you can leave us a comment and we can follow up on some, some, um, some of the sh information that she's sharing. So diving into, you said be empowered by movement. What does that mean for you? So for me, being empowered by movement is being able to, sorry, I'm trying to find a great way to phrase this. So the gym or your workout space is a safe place. That's somewhere where you can go. And if you're working with the right person, you know, it's okay to try new things and maybe they don't go right the first time. And that's totally fine. And you feel okay with that because you're in that safe place. You feel comfortable pushing yourself to the next level and achieving these crazy goals, like getting a pull-up or deadlifting 200 pounds. And that confidence and that curiosity bleeds through from that safe place into the rest of the world, where I've had clients who finally have the confidence to ask for a raise at work or realize that they've been stuck in like a dead-end relationship and are finally willing to do the work on themselves so that they can find the person who's like truly the right match for them. Right, right. I, I can see you're, ha you're passionate about that. I can see that's where, where you're heading to. So it's like, what's the, um, I guess, when, when people come to you and, you know, they're hurting and stuff like that, what's your, what's your overall, um, um, what I'm trying to say, uh, help me here. <laughs> what, what's your, I mean, you're, the whole thing is to relieve the pain. I understand that and stuff like that. But like, I can tell that you have a passion for this. So like, how does that come through to where you're helping the client get past because some of their hang up, their you know, is their physical hang up is mental hang up. I'm I'm, I'm hearing this because like I, I work out a little bit, so my biggest thing was like I hate going to the gym, but I love the re the results of it. So it's like, how did you shift that mindset? Because it's it's not really the the fact of going to work out; it's the benefits that you're getting from the workout that people are not understanding. Is that what you're talking about when you say the empowerment of the movement? Yeah. And it's like, it's in those little movements where like my client, Sarah walked up to a barbell that had 130 pounds on it. It was nearly her body weight. And she looks at me and she goes, I'm afraid to do this. I don't know if I can do it. And I turned to her and I said, no, you're excited and you're willing to try. So she walked up to the bar and she says, I am excited and I'm willing to try. And that barbell flew off the floor. <laughs> So I can definitely see you're passionate about it. And I would love to have you come back and share a little bit more of, of your journey as you, as you continue to grow and blossom. Because I, cause I would love to see how, where you go with this. Would you I be willing to that. come back? Great. And so what's the one thing you really want to leave the audience with before we, we wrap up? If something scares you, go for it. I love that. And where can people find more information about you and your services and what you do? Yeah. Uh, so I'm primarily on Instagram. I'm at Beth Moves. And you can also find me on my website, BethMovesCPT.com. All right. Well, thank you, Ms. Beth, for sharing your wisdom and your insight. It's been a pleasure talking to you. It's been wonderful talking to you, too. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's a pleasure. And I want to remind everybody that feedback is welcome. Email us if you have any guests or show ideas that you'd like to see. Links to all the of uh, the sites that Beth mentioned will be posted in the comments. So make sure you check out the description below. She's got some golden nuggets for you. Thank you again for watching. Give us a thumbs up if you're enjoying it. And if you really want to see more insight that we have to share, please consider hitting that subscribe button over there. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow and create your own path. And we'll see you back here on another episode of Coffee with Tea. All right. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, this is Tanya again, popping in to say thank you for listening to today's show. Coffee with Tea interviews are always free, and if you're enjoying the wisdom and the insights that are being shared, please stay and grow with us and show your financial support. You can buy us coffee or become a monthly supporter. 
Links are posted in the description box. And again, I wanted to personally say thank you for tuning in.